Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. I would like to show you my favorite deck in Hearthstone called Lanessa Taurus Paladin. Because it recently hit rank one legend within the Hearthstone, uh... EU and it ranks I'll figure out and just put it on the screen here, but it recently hit rank one legend Today I'm sitting with my twitch chat. Hello, everybody. Everyone say hi We are talking about Lanessa Paladin and there are a lot of lists that are currently running around right now Uh, but yeah, I am wearing a suit because my brother got married the previous day My, my brother got married yesterday and uh, yeah, it's really really cool But the really cool thing about this deck in particular is how a lot of people are able to hit rank one legend with it but at the beginning of this month, someone was able to reach rank one legend with Pipsy Lanessa Paladin, and it's very close to my original list. It's still got the one copy of the Metal Detector, one copy of the Knickknack Shack, one copy of the Whore on the Wind Lord, and the other card that makes this a little bit uh, unique is the Blood Mage Thalnos, which can work with the O Manager and with the Holy Glow Stick. So if you want to go down this direction, it is something that you could do. But Vicious Syndicate recently actually finally is talking about Lanessa Paladin. Lanessa Paladin is finally showing signs of life. And I have to say, where's my shout out? Where's my shout out, man? Like, come on. I did so much work for this archetype and I can't even get, you know, uh, the Pipsy build is very promising originally from Clark Hellscream. You can't put that in the freaking title. Come on, Vicious Syndicate. Come on, Zacco. Who else was playing this deck two weeks ago? Barely anybody, but I digress. The buffed Metal Detector really is a great addition for this deck and should be included as two copies. Knick Knack Shack does not perform well. I disagree with this, but we'll talk about this here in a second. Neither does Blood Mage Thalnos. Surprisingly, Grifta is another poor performer that we were uh, suggest cutting. That's a cut to me personally. Kind of, kind of hate to hear that, but Grifta does not really perform as well as it has been recently because it is very much of a high roll card. You either need to get a draw three when you have no options, or you need to get a mind control at the right time or the deal six. Unfortunately, it's it's very make it or break it with Grifta. Uh, but Lanessa is mostly using the deck with Divine Brew and Horror of the Windlord rather than Grifta. Again, Grifta wasn't a main win condition. It was just something else to kind of give you extra gas if you needed it. Uh, but they have added Gold Panner to help the Greedy Partner Synergy to activate on turn two more consistently. This deck wants coins more than anything else to both enable Lanessa and Pipsy. So Lanessa Paladin has even made its way onto, eight, onto Vicious Syndicate and it's a legitimate deck to where this is what we're going to be looking at in today's video and most of the gameplay is their version of the deck with Salesman, uh, with two Metal Detectors, as well as what's the other unique inclusion in this deck? I don't think there's another unique inclusion in this deck actually. So yeah, there you go. Pretty decent. Uh, consider this karma for all decks that you've stolen. Excuse me, but I, I, I don't know, ex I don't know a thing that you're talking about. I've never stolen a deck in my life. But speaking of stealing decks, if you'd like to do it, Hearthstone, uh, HearthstoneDecks.net recently showcased someone else reaching rank one legend with Taurus Paladin. Very similar to the original list that we were seeing from uh, from Mystic uh, from Mystic King. But yeah, dude, the point that I am trying to make is that Lanessa Paladin is a good archetype. Multiple people have hit rank one legend with it, and in the game clips coming up ahead, you will see that I hit rank 100 legend with this deck. It's very doable. My stats right now with this current version of the deck as of today are 11 and two, but as of uh, this current season, I am 21 and 16 with this deck. I originally climbed to legend with pretty much exclusively Paladin. The only decks that I've actually played this season have been Big Shaman and Lanessa Paladin. And once this refreshes, but I am 61 and 59 in total with only playing Lanessa Paladin. And unfortunately, these mages and these uh, these druids have really given me a, a rough time. But that's why I've been optimizing the deck. I still believe that this is a very, very good archetype to be playing, depending on what exactly that you are experiencing on the ladder. And here are the cards that you should keep in the mulligan. And the stats according to HS Replay uh, through Diamond through Legend actually have Taurus Paladin at a 53% win rate over about 3,500 games. Now, granted, the, the list that you're seeing right here is going to be the one with the Blood Mage Thalnos, but we could easily just look at it for some, uh, some mulligan stats. But yeah, the cards that you want to keep on your mulligan are going to be your Pipsy, your Miracle Salesman, your Hi-Ho Silverwing, your Living Horizon, and if you want to play Grifta, I don't necessarily suggest keeping it, but the other cards you can debatably keep are going to be your Mixologist as well as your Greedy Partner. Now, looking at the keep uh, win rates, you know, Mi uh, Miracle Salesman, Hi-Ho, and Greedy Partner are some of the best cards that you can keep because you want that curve. Now, you also have the Panner in this deck as well. You can easily keep that in your mulligan, but one thing I really don't like about Panner is how this card essentially feels like a two mana draw one. 
I think that the perfect list could actually take out uh, one gold panner and put in another knickknack shack to where you have the one panner so you can play it on turn two if you have it but then you still have the knickknack shack for a lot of draw combos and the reason why i think this is particularly useful is because there have been times where i played this version of the deck and my top end at the end of the games or like a, a in late game suddenly just isn't good enough sometimes getting that one additional draw or maybe having like that chain get set up is super crucial in order to get that lanessa in the situations to where you are just waiting for this card it's just lanessa waiting room so i would say that maybe if you want to get experimental take out one gold panner and put in the uh the knickknack shack because both rank one legend lists have the have the shack in it i'm just gonna say but both of them also do have the blood mage down though so i'm not really sure what exactly the best 30 is but i will tell you guys right now that i am super excited and super happy to tell you that pipsy paladin is an actual meta breaker and since i'm wearing a suit and tie you automatically know that i'm not lying to you right right but thank you guys so much for making it to the uh the end of this deck breakdown don't forget to hit that subscribe button yada 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 i got a really cool outfit so you better be subscribing to say how dapper clark hellscreen looks thank you so much to everyone on our patreon who keeps us uh, supported and uh yeah thank you guys for, for joining us today and we will see you for the next deck guide video we'll see you for the next one that's what i usually say sorry we'll see you for the next one i went completely off script here Thank God I've not seen Shopper Demon Hunter. Legitimately feels like Hand Buff Paladin. Exactly. That's why I don't like it. It's because it's automated. Seashell and the, and the Pipsy is toxic as well. Not at all. Not only do I have to run a three mana card that supports a seven mana card that, that brings out specific cards in my deck. They don't bring out the same cards every single time. Zilliax is not guaranteed if you have a Sandcastle. Case in point. So if you're like, oh, just Pipsy for the Zilliax, you get it every time. No, that doesn't happen every time. Even the high roll. Even the high roll of this deck has different circumstances around it. Now, granted, it doesn't mean that it's less bullshit when it happens against a deck that automatically loses to Zilliax. But, the re but I will not say that Pipsy is toxic for one simple reason. There's so much building, like there's so much building up around the deck that you have to do in order to make the deck. For Shopper Demon Hunter, it's play weapon, draw Shopper, and that's it. Like, it's not toxic, it's annoying. I never I never said the deck was toxic. It's just not the gameplay that I really like in Hearthstone when the only thing that really matters is, oh, I played this card on turn two into playing this card on turn three, and if I do this every single game, then suddenly my deck is good. You know what I mean? I want, I want a deck to be able to deviate, and that's what this deck does very well. It can do the same thing over and over again, but it gets put in positions to where you literally can't do that. Also, what the hell? Tsunami Druid? Oh no, bro. Oh no, dude. This just is gonna kill me. Reno Demon Hunter? Oh my God, Reno Demon Hunter. Don't even remind me. How's that for a new direction? You can't call good draws from your opponent toxic. It's a different thing. Exactly. I, again, I wasn't claiming that that game was toxic. That's not the claim I was making. Also, he just did this for a cluster. What? That's it? Honestly, dude, I have almost everything I could ask for. If this dies... Wait, is this just lethal? Could this have been lethal? No. No, it couldn't have been. No, no, I'm crazy. Next turn is lethal, though. Everything has to be Omega Complex deck to satisfy you. I don't get why people hate simple decks. No, it's not about simple decks, bro. I don't mind if a deck plays one into two into three into four. What I mind is if the, if, 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 if is that the only way the deck wins? If that's the only way the deck Low wins, that's frustrating to me. Miniset. I don't like Turn it when it's literally high. just Turn play five, curve, master. get rewarded for it. Demon. Play Not every single one. deck needs Crash to be like it. Naga Mage Discount level of complicated. I agree with you on Play that, on that, uh, on that front. To zero. Next but oh man, does it, does it not feel demon. satisfying just to get to rolled over by someone who's just counting the four? And that's the, and that's just how the deck wins every time. That's what I don't like. Really? Flowchart for uh, Shopper Demon Hunter after the mini set. Turn four, umpire. Turn four, uh, puppet master. Fetch uh, mini set demon. 
play it for one, crash it, discount the original to zero, play it, discount shop it to zero, next turn, play return policy for mini sit. Okay, but that actually sounds kind of interesting with the return policy part of it. the biggest amount of damage I've done from the base this early. Let's go. Turn 8. I love a druid that just sits there and does nothing. I was very scared of the tsunami. But it was just Reno druid that's running worse cards, I guess. I don't want my deck to suddenly fail because I didn't hit the 1, 2, 3, 4 curve. I want my deck to be able to survive if I miss my turn 1. And there are some, like, for example, if, if I don't play my my instrument tech by turn two or turn three some of my decks just fall apart you know i don't like when a deck is so dependent on the weapon that it loses without it i want a deck that uses a weapon and it can win if i don't draw it you know it's one thing when it's like the weapon's the main part of the deck like hand buff paladin to a degree but it's still frustrating it's still annoying Elemental deck suddenly becoming viable uh, because of damage charger getting uh, so many bombs to faces like uh, monkey shoot face monkey could. Just gonna do this for an extra minion. Playing this for a coin is kind of unnecessary. Draw a card. Pirate Demon Hunter uh, weapon is a classic bonus, but not mandatory. Honestly, I think using Pirate Demon Hunter as an example is great. So, like, case in point, imagine if the deck didn't work if you couldn't, like, if you only played Sigil on 2. The deck can work if you don't play Sigil on 2. The deck can work if you don't have the Pirate on 1. Is it still an annoying deck that I'd rather not face? Uh, that I'd rather not face? Yes. Yes, 100%. I don't like the deck. I don't think I'd ever like a deck like that, honestly. It's just aggro. I don't like most aggro decks. Essentially, what I'm trying to say... This is a very long-winded uh, explanation. But what I am essentially saying to you, I do not like decks that have one direction or only one goal in mind. I would rather a deck have multiple win conditions. Because if that one win condition gets denied, you're just not gonna have a good time, you know? Look at my face. Look at my face. Oh, yo. Ah. Let's go. Plus two, plus two. Hit him in the face. Oh, we're so close. Top 100. I can taste it. Like, an another great example is actually Raza Priest. Because, yeah, obviously Raza on five and Anduin on eight was insane. But did you need to hit those thresholds to win most games? The answer was no. There were some games where, yeah, you kind of needed it. But overall, overall, you can still win if even if that didn't happen. I kind of hate when decks that basically revolve like that, like getting an overturn card on play. Exactly, exactly. Again, I just don't like that when, like, you have to hit this, otherwise your deck is bad. Also, top 100, baby! Gimme. 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 Give it. Give to Hell Scream. I haven't been double digits in so long. Mm, let me have it. Delicious. Absolutely delicious, bro. Uh, Black Myth, uh, Black Myth Wukong is essentially a Souls game that is telling you the journey to the West story, uh, through that medium. Monkey Dark Souls? I mean, am I wrong? <laughs> am, am I, am I wrong in my assessment? It's Monkey Souls. That's all it is. Main story can be, uh, kind of linear at times. What, in, in Wukong? The story is linear? I don't know if I'd call the story linear, but... Okay, we got Seashell into Titan. It's pretty good. I guess I gotta play this because I just need the minion. 
Time for you to finish Elden Ring and add uh, lives of, uh, lives of P after you beat Wukong. Yeah, what do I want to play tomorrow? I really don't know. Cause like you want to know something that I recently uh okay you got you guys are gonna think I'm a moron by the way or or I don't know maybe maybe people can relate to me. I for the longest time wasn't using this. I had everything on my C drive and I wasn't using uh my my extra storage. And I finally used my extra storage for all the video games that have been sitting on my computer. <laughs> I can finally keep them. I keep having to delete stuff because I never had room for it, but I finally can do it. Oh, it's so freeing. Yeah, I'm so I'm very innocent, man. I thought I knew computers, but it turns out I don't know shit. From what I've seen, which is not uh, a lot, Dark Souls is more linear. Elden Ring is uh, non-linear as fuck, though. Elden Ring has a has a lot of moving pieces. Oh, money, 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 bro. Print the money. Put it in the bag, bro. I think now Zilliax will get pulled as a taunt, a hundred percent. Which means we get Zilliax and the the Sandcastle. That just wins the game. I still love you, oh fuck. That's not the that's not the lyrics. <laughs> that's not how the lyrics go. Oh hold on a minute, bro. So this pulls out Mozilli. This isn't lethal, is it? No, it is lethal. I was like, wait a minute, I'm one damage off. No, I'm not. <laughs> Getting married? Nope, my brother got married. That's what happened. Oh, I broke the game. I, I broke Hearthstone, literally. There we go, 73. <laughs> I'm wearing regular tennis shoes because I'm at, I'm at home. I'm not gonna put on the the, the, the dress shoes unless I need to look dressed. Uh, unless I need to look dressed up. As I'm also sipping on my ca my Canada Dry ginger ale. Oh, I'm so sophisticated. <laughs> Why wear uh, shoes in your place? Uh because they're comfy. Like I I can I put my feet down. You know, it's just there. It's an extra support. I don't know, but I like wearing shoes, man. Comfy shoes make a setup, in my opinion. Should have been drinking gamer subs for real. Lol. I don't, I don't have the gamer subs uh, uh, plug, but I have Rogue Energy if that's what you like. If you want to support the channel, then there you go. But I don't know, dude. Would I accept the gamer subs? I think I would. I probably would. Yeah. No reason not to. True love won't desert you. As a crippled dude, comfy feet are a little concerned for me. Oh, I didn't realize. I didn't realize what I what I was doing here. <laughs> Drinking rogue energy right now, actually. Good stuff, I like it. Fuck yeah, Rise. Good to hear that. Go my my favorite's the blueberry. Or the, the the blue one. The one that tastes like like yeah, the one that tastes like blue. I like I like blue. T taste blue ma ma makes makes my makes my my my, uh, my heart spin. I was always like the blue uh, the the blue Jolly Rancher guy, blue suckers, blue hair. I I, got, I have a problem with the color blue, man. Sour candy that tastes like gummy worms. So I did that one. I did a cotton candy a lot. Those are the ones that I did. oh I also did the the, the the rocket pop. Rocket pop's pretty good too. I only touched the blue ones. I have a problem. <laughs> Clearly, I have a problem. Okay, let's go. Uh, this actually is surviving. That's always nice. We have two coins. Divine Brew. About to be three. Oh my god, dude. I think we just win in two turns. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's chill. Tap. I said let's chill. I said let's chill, bro. My god, don't kill the wing.
No! Eight mana, or seven mana. Plays for one. We have six mana left over. We play this five times, which gives us plus nine, which is 24, 24 plus another eight. That's 30. It's exact lethal. As long as we don't somehow die here. No taunts. No, uh... There's no armor, right? There's no lethal in my- WHAT NO! Are you fucking kidding me? Are you actually fucking kidding me, man? Okay, hold on. He's played one legendary. If he if he didn't play the Mukla, man. Uh, no, I don't want to kill the well because I don't want to take three damage. He hasn't, he hasn't played any coins. He's not getting anything from it. I need to set up a lethal next turn. Maybe this could be wrong, but... So he gets another monkey. The pocket sands! No! Wait, wait. Wait, no, it's fine. Because they're not quick played. Lanessa plus all the all the things. This has to be lethal. Fuck it, not counting it. Not counting it. Never count. It's always lethal. It's amazing what happens if you keep Lanessa, honestly. Will I stop there? Uh, great question. I, I'm hungry, that's why. This is a rank one deck after all, that is true. That is true, and I've been gone from playing Hearthstone for like the past week. I don't usually like doing this. Because in the mirror, we could be a little bit slow. But I like the idea of like trying to stick like a gold panner if he doesn't do anything this turn. Also, if he plays gold panner, I can now get rid of it. So it's kind of important for me to do it this way. Because now I can do this. I could try to protect the minion a little bit easier. And this goes a better distance than keeping a coin. And now I can do this into this. We have this to set up the combo for a scam. We're looking pretty good. No shave, gamer. Wait a minute. I shaved like two weeks ago, two, two, three weeks ago, something like that. All right, Gold Panner did his job. Wait, why was there an additional uh, package of the drink? I don't get it. It's supposed to be you use one, you still have two. The reason why that works is because Lanessa is casting it twice. You cast the three drinks left spell twice, so therefore it gives you two copies in your hand of the two drinks left. Then when you play that again, you have two copies that are being added to your hand that have one drink left. That's how that works. It's understandable if you're not uh, aware of the interaction. Okay, hold on. So we have the Titan followed by the Con Man. Oh, that is so funny. Oh, that is so funny. If he doesn't exactly have con man, this is so funny. Because I can just literally turn this into a 2-2. Two -two. Don't have con man. Don't have con man. Because the, the issue with him playing the con man is that they're playing their Amatis, uh, def Oh, fuck! No! They're playing it proactively, and now I'm using mine defensively. I don't want to be doing this. I want to be proactive. I want to be- I want to be proactive as fuck. And now- ah, oh, dude! Man, now I have to do this again. 
And I also don't have a way of dealing with this outside of using my coin. Oh, now I have that. Okay, that's that's good. I hate how he's making me do this, but I have to. I have to respect. It's the most important card that I have to respect. Do this here, just in case. No second con man? No second con man? If he's using resources to kill this, that's fine. Worth it to play the salesman here. Zilliax. Take one more damage to remove, but eh. Con Man pulls another Horizon. That was Horizon the last thing that he played, so Con Man isn't good anymore then. song. Apparently this is a Romanian, uh, a Romanian song. I think it's Romanian. Is this lethal? It's just lethal, bro. Yeah. Wait, how does he know? Bro, you don't have no idea what I'm doing. Dude, that's sus. That's Omega sus. How'd you know I was gonna win next turn? How'd you know? Is it because I swung the weapon? Was he that confident? Like, did he just think I was just gonna let Nessa hit next turn? That's why I swung the weapon? Jeez, man. <laughs> Here we go. Like, he, he shouldn't have conceded based off the information that was given to him is the point that I'm trying to make. He shouldn't have conceded. He didn't know. He, would have, he only would have known if he looked at the stream. So. <laughs> okay. Um... I need my sea shill. I need I need my shill, bro. Where where is my shill? <laughs> shill successful. And I also have this and oh, dude, we're 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 so winning this one. My ha ha. Kind of a problem, unfortunately. Maybe I was actually just supposed to kill the 4 4. Hits me for 5, then another 10. Looks like we're fine. Unless he plays like Big Minion these next two turns. Okay, that's annoying. Oh my god. It's actually perfect. Because now I can Pipsy into Coin Coin, Divine Brew, Glow Stick, knock this out in the same turn if I need to do that. And against this shot, and against this Warlock, we might need to do it. No Cult Neophyte. No! No, the Cult Neophyte! Oh my god, the cold neophyte, bro! No! No! Why? Wait, do you believe?
Hit him in the face, we win. I hit the percent! I actually hit the percent, bro! It hit face! Bro, come on! No way. Ain't no way, man. Omega scam. Yeah, that's the last one. I peaked at 51. I, I peaked at 51. I, I That's fine. I don't, I don't need top 50. I'm fine with 51. Omega fucking scam. You've got to be bullshitting me, man. That cult neophyte won this game so fucking hard, I can't undersell it. Fuck cult. I hate tax cards so fucking hard. Money. Uh, okay, I'm hungry. I'm hungry, guys. I'm sorry. I also wanted a reason to get out of the suit, actually.